Let's do the last script in the module. We have now started to work on script 9A. Let's say at this point you you know did some thresholding and you're quite happy with the detected water models. And you say, I really want to download this to my computer. I also created this composite, which is a very computationally intensive things to do. Uh, I want to use the composite and do something else with it. So can I download this data onto my computer as files, which I can use in other software or do some further analysis? So we'll learn about exports. Let's run the script and see what we have so far. So we have now created this uh, really nice looking composite for our admin region. And we have computed some indices, indexes, and we now have a detection of water bodies. We have a binary image one and zeros. I want to download this. Uh, Earth Engine is a completely open system. You can download data at any point during your analysis. So you can start and at some point you reach the limits of your skills or maybe limits of Earth Engine and you say, now it, I don't know how to do anything further. You can download the results and then use any other software that you want. Uh, so again, this uh, I recommend as you're learning Earth Engine, you may have a goal of doing maybe an automated uh, detection of erosion for the whole continent, right? That's maybe your goal, but maybe your skill will take you a while to reach there. So do not, you, uh, uh, you can also say, I will do some parts, download the data and do the other parts in you know, other things till I learn more Earth Engine. That allows you to kind of use Earth Engine, save time, save some uh, computation resources and continue with your project. So we'll see how to download this data. Earth Engine allows you to export images as GeoTIFF files. So let's see if we can, uh, first we'll uh, learn how to download this composite image, uh, and then we'll see how to download this uh, threshold image. So let's learn about export. Let's go to the docs. If we search for export, there are different kinds of exports you can do from Earth Engine. Uh, you can export an image. So if you have uh, an, an image, a composite image or a binary image, you can export that. Uh, you can export a table. If you have a feature collection, if you like the boundaries from Gaul and you say, I want to download them as shape files, you can export them uh, as well. There are some other exports. You know, if you have an ex uh, image collection, you can export a video, like an animation of that. If you have uh, to want to create an interactive map, you can download them uh, as export map, which will give you a multi-layer map with interactive uh, map visualization. For most of you though, you'll want to export these images. So let's see uh, what are the options. You have three options. You can export image to asset. Uh, when you run this function, it'll take whatever image you created, compute it, and it'll go back to your assets. It'll be created and will be loaded into Earth Engine in your assets folder. This is useful where you have very long computation and you don't want to run it every time you run the script. Say, I've done this lot of processing. I want to export the result. The result will be pre-computed and loaded into assets. You can share the asset with a colleague and say, hey, I've done this work, you can take it further. Or you can use the same asset in another script and start building on that. So uh, when you have a very large workflow, I also recommend breaking it down into different logical pieces and exporting the images as assets at the end of it. So you don't, uh, it'll make the whole workflow go much faster. You can export to cloud storage. Google Cloud has a product called Google Cloud Storage, allows you to uh, rent uh, storage space in Google Cloud. This allows you to rent very large amount of storage. Let's say you have done your final thesis and you want to export the entire image for Canada at 10 meter resolution. And that might be maybe two terabytes you don't want to buy two terabytes in your drive or you don't have storage, you can export to cloud storage. Once the export is done, download those images and delete them and you'll be only charged for the amount of time you use the two terabytes, typically just a few cents. So again, this helps when you want to do large exports. Thirdly, what most of us will use uh, most of the time is the third option, export image to drive, which is downloading images and exporting them to your Google Drive. All of you will have a Google Drive account, 15 GB of free storage. Some of you have more and you'll use that storage to export the image. There's a question. Uh, yes, you can call, uh, the question is, can we call script within a script? Yes, uh, there's something called script modules, which allows you to uh, take a script, write some functions and use those functions in other script. This is typically used in large projects where you say, I have a standard way of doing something. I want to use it in all my scripts. You can do something called script modules. We'll add the link to the documentation 
uh, in the notes. So we, now let's add a link to the script module documentation in the user guide. Uh, but note in that the script modules uh, are helpful for reusing the code. It won't solve your problem because when you run this, it'll still compute that image every time you run it. So the asset will solve the problem that once you compute it and exported it, that image is there as pixels. You don't need to compute it every time. So you can do your subsequent analysis much faster. So again, you can use both, but uh, my point was if you're doing a very large analysis, break it down, export each chunk, and then you don't have to pre-compute that every time. Uh, one thing that's missing from this list is export image to my computer. Right? Or you might say, can't I just get it directly to my computer? Earth Engine doesn't allow that because a lot of the exports might take minutes, hours, days. Sometimes you don't want to be connected to Earth Engine for all the time. So uh, Google Drive exists in the cloud. Earth Engine is in the cloud. Once it's done, it can directly transfer the data. Once the file is there, you can download it to your computer. And I'll show you a little bit of uh, uh, a trick to get those files to your computer automatically instead of manually downloading it. So let's learn how to use this function. So when you want to export this, the first time you see this function, it's a very scary looking function, right? It's got like 20 parameters that you need to write to be able to download these images. So we'll teach you some tricks to be able to deal with functions that have this lot of parameters and you want to uh, use those functions. So let's run this. First, let's say I have my, let's print this image. I want to export this image. This is my composite image. If I print this, you will see that this image has 23 bands. It has got all the spectral bands, band one through band 12, including the band 8A. And then it has got this other bands. Um, these are all the bands which contain some quality information, cloud probability, snow probability, QA bands, uh, scene classification, and all of this extra stuff. If you need those, well and good, you can export that, but most of the time you don't really need this. So what you can do is you can select a subset of bands that you want to use. So I'll create a new image called export image and I can select the bands I want. So we'll use the function called select to select the bands. So select functions allow you to pass on band name or a list of bands that you can use. So let's say I just want to export one band. I can just say image dot select band date. You can see I had a 23 band image and I extracted this one band out of this. And that allows you to do this. The select function also takes a list of bands. So let's say I want to export the RGB bands, band four, three, and two. I can give it a list and you can select those bands. Okay. Uh, again, this function is a bit confusing. It feels like filtering. And you might say, I want to select some bands. Can I use a filter? No, filter works on image collections to select images that match your criteria. Select works on images to select bands that match your criteria. And the Boolean conditional operators work on images to select pixels that match your condition. So these three are often very confusing for beginners. They work on different objects and do different things. The select function also has this wildcard support. So you can do things like this, that image.select b.star. This means select all the bands that start with b. So now you can see you selected those 12 bands here. Right, so you can give a single value, a list of values, or a regular expression, and you can select those bands. For now, let's just go and uh, select the three bands that we want to export. We have our export image ready. Let's write the export function. Uh, when you're writing these functions, uh, use the autocomplete functionality generously control plus space. So let's write this function. I'll type a few letters of the function, control space. It'll give me this pop-up. I can use the arrow keys and enter to select. So I can select this and I can select the function. Autocomplete also auto fills the parameters that you need. So I can now press control space again and it fills in all the parameters that are needed. So I don't need to go back and forth with the documentation. And so once again, if you want to write this function like this, use autocomplete, arrow keys. Once you have, 
once you have the function name, control space to autocomplete. So now we have all these parameters. For most of your exports or most of the functions, only few will be required. Uh, others you can leave it to the default value. So if you want to leave a lot of these values to default and you want to enter them, you have to kind of say, I don't want to enter a description. You'll have to enter null. I don't want to enter a folder. You have to enter null. And you have to still have to fill all the parameters. Instead of that, Earth Engine gives you a better way when you have a lot of parameters. Instead of giving the parameters one after the other, you can give a dictionary of parameters. So what I like to do is I can autofill all the parameters, start dictionary, the curly bracket, and then start giving the parameters with their name and value. So what's the image we want to export? Well, that's the export image that we want to export. Enter. Next, what, what is the description? When you run the export, it'll appear in your task tab. So just for you to identify what is running, uh, we can just enter export composite. Remember the description cannot have spaces, you can have underscore instead. Folder, by default, when you export it to Google Drive, it'll go to the root of your Google Drive and all the files will be there. I like to keep my Google Drive organized and I always export my Earth Engine stuff into this one dedicated folder called Earth Engine. So you can give any folder name. If it doesn't exist, it'll be created and all your exports will go there. File name prefix. The suffix will be .tiff. What's the file name prefix? That's the name of the file. And we'll just say composite. And again, I think it, at this point, if you're not clipped it, you can also clip the uh, image. I think we have clipped it before, but typically you can clip it just when you're exporting it. Uh, you don't need the dimensions typically. You must give a region. Even if you clipped it, you still have to specify the region. We'll say we want to export the region uh, geometry. Do not forget the region. If you forget the region, whatever is visible in your code editor will be exported. So if I run it without a region parameter, I'll get a rectangular export, whatever is visible right now. So do not forget the geometry. Scale, what is the resolution that you want to export? Uh, Sentinel-2 RGB bands are 10 meters, so we'll keep 10 meters. You can give a specific CRS. If you don't give a specific CRS, uh, the image will be created using the CRS of the first band of the image. Uh, if you want a specific CRS, you can give uh, the PSG code. So for example, if I want to export this data as in a UTM, I can give uh, this UTM zone number for this region. If I leave it blank, it'll just be the whatever CRS is the first band. Max pixels. The default value for this is 1 million. So uh, if your image is up to 1 million pixels, it'll be exported. If your image is more than 1 million pixels, you will get an error saying that max pixels reached will stop. This is just to prevent new users accidentally clicking off last exports. Uh, you uh, start to export something without realizing and suddenly you are out of Google Drive space because you start an export that might be one terabyte. Right? So if your export has more than one million pixels, it'll stop. Now you know what you're doing. Feel free to set this to a very high number. So I always set it to a very high number. I don't care. Don't stop my export. I know what I'm doing. Let it go, even if it requires this many pixels. Rest, you are typically don't need, so you can just you know delete all those, close the dictionary, and you're done. You now fill this very complex looking function with only the parameters that were required as a dictionary, and you can start the export. So I can click Run, and you'll see my task tab has lighted up, and you'll see there's one pending task that's waiting for me. I can click Run, It'll give me a final check saying that I'm going to create this into this folder, check if this is correct, and you can uh, do the uh, composite. Yeah. So we can just say, I want to start the export, and I'm not going to start it. I'll show something else before that. Uh, there's a question on, you need to specify the file format in the export. Uh, the file format is always GeoTIFF, so you don't need to specify. Uh, if you're doing deep learning with uh, and want to export data for deep learning, there's a format called TF record. Uh, so you can specify that as a TF record, which allow you to export image chips that can be used in deep learning. But for remote sensing, we, there's only one format that is supported, that is GeoTIFF. So you don't need to specify, that's a default. So uh, we'll export this. I started my export. You can see my export finished a uh, while back. Let me just show you what that looks like. So once the export is done, you can also there's the export to drive. I export it here. 
open it'll open the drive folder you can see this composite uh, has been exported 145 megabytes of image three band image at 10 meter resolution and i can go and download this and i'll have a tiff file one other thing you can do is since i do a lot of exports and i don't want to go and download them manually what i do is i go and install this google drive google provides you with a google drive installer for mac and windows so if you're on one of those platforms you can install google drive for desktop this installs a software on your machine that syncs certain folders from your google drive automatically to your computer so i've installed this on my mac machine you can see my drive is running and i have selected it to always sync the earth engine folder that means as soon as a new file appears here this software will sync that file to my computer and it'll be there automatically so you can see it has already downloaded the composite it's synced that means i don't need to all you know I'll start the export and then i'll the file will magically appear on my computer whenever it start so this is quite helpful so i recommend you use that and sync that earth engine folder and so you don't have to manually download the data let's see the output uh, you can see this composite has been loaded and it's been created so this image has been downloaded to my computer now and i can see it in qgs so you can see this is the uh, rgb pans that i downloaded from my composite using uh, all the analysis that we did and these are now exist on my computer i can do anything that i want with it all right let's do the exercise now you can explain 